What's happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we are talking everything topwater walking baits. Now I'm gonna take you through a few of my favorite types and colors to throw. I'll give you some ideas for rod, reel, and line combinations to throw them on. And I'm even gonna take you out on the water to talk about how and where to throw these. So enough yapping, let's get into it and talk about some of my favorite types to throw. Now for me, the first one we gotta talk about is the Hedden Super Spook, specifically the Super Spook Junior. There's a reason why so many people call every type of topwater walking bait a spook. And that's really because, uh, like me and probably a bunch of other people, the Hedden Spook is what a lot of people learn to throw. They're cheap, you can find them everywhere, and they work great, they've got just a single knock in them. Uh, they're not too big. I like the Super Spook Junior, like I said, because it's perfect to throw on ponds, small lakes, doesn't really matter. Awesome all around size. Now this is the first treble hook I ever tied. Uh, I did pretty horrible, but it works and this has caught fish. Head and makes a few different sizes. This is the Zara Spook Puppy, uh, another one that I learned to throw when I was younger. This is a lot easier to throw on a spinning rod. It's a smaller kind. And then you've got the larger Zara Spook. So different options. I really think the Head and Super Spook has to be in there for talk as one of the best. Now for me, probably one of my top two, I would say, one or two, has to be the KVD Sexy Dog. They make a Sexy Dog Junior, but I like the full size. I forget how, how much this weighs and how big it is. You can tell this has caught a, a bunch of fish. This is the Sexy Chrome Shad or something they call it. It's rubbed off enough, it's almost like a bone chrome mixed together. Again, you can find the Sexy Dog all around, a bunch of different colors. This is a blueback herring color. Sunny day like this, a chrome is perfect. And you can fish this all day. Fall fishing when those bait fish are pushed up shallow and those fish are feeding. Throw a chrome like this all day. Don't worry about morning, night, like summer. These will get bit. Another one worth mentioning is the Yozuri 3DB. Cheap, you can find these a lot of places. This walks really easy, so if you're a beginner, uh, finding a bait that walks really easy for you is key. Another one that I've been trying recently and really liking is this Excite Baits Heckler. Now there's a few that look like this, the Teckle Kick Knocker, the Reaction Innovations Vixen, which I finally got my hands on one. I didn't have one of the originals, but they just released some. Again, very similar to the KVD Sexy Dog in size, shape, you know, just minor differences, but both of these walk really well, good size, uh, and they have three different treble hooks, which I prefer because a lot of fish are gonna come up and swipe at it. I like having that extra treble. Berkeley's got a number of different types. This is the Jaywalker. I've used these quite a bit. Uh, they walk really well. Again, a big thing for beginners, but different sizes. If you like six cents, they've got the Catwalk. 13 Fishing has one called the Dual Pitch. does have a really good sound to it. You got the River to Sea Rover, of course the Lucky Craft Sammy, and one out of my Monster Bass box, I think this is the Patriot. But in all honesty, if I could only choose two, it would be a Super Spook Junior and a KVD Sexy Dog. Now when it comes to colors, Bone has to be up there. That's probably my number one uh, two-ish color, uh, tied with some sort of chrome. Again, this is that sexy chrome, but an all chrome like this on a sunny day like today is absolutely awesome. Now. A lot of people like a straight black walking bait. I honestly don't throw these as much. Um, I'm really a bone guy when it comes to picking one up and throwing it most of the time. However, uh, some people like that black. It creates a silhouette if it's a little bit dirtier water. I don't know, up to you, but uh, if I only had two, I would say a bone and some sort of chrome. I also have to say that a clear ghost minnow, translucent type color is also really good if you're fishing clear water, especially when that sun's up. Um, a ghost minnow type, something translucent, natural, is also a good one to have in your arsenal if you fish a lot of clear water. Okay, so when it comes to the combo, you want a rod that's got some backbone in it because a lot of these are not small. These weigh over a half ounce. So you can't have a real, you know, like lightweight rod, real flimsy. You want something with a little bit of backbone to work that bait, but you want some bend in it to make sure they stay pinned on these little treble hooks. You'd think something with that many hooks couldn't come off, but these are not big hooks. So for bank fishing, I usually like a shorter rod, six, eight, up to, you know, seven foot to a seven foot even, seven foot right on the nose is a great all around compromise. This is the TFO Tactical Bass 7 foot cranking rated for lures up to a half ounce, but you can see it's a moderate action. And that's important for throwing these treble hook baits because you can't horse them. I'm throwing it out, walking it back, and as soon as I feel a fish, I'm just reeling down into it and pulling to the side. I'm really letting the rod and the line do the work. And speaking of line, this is some P-Line Topwater Copolymer. Really liking this, it's really soft, easy to work, cast really well, and that's something you wanna be able to have is a bait like this. You can really send it out there, work it all the way back, cover water, because a lot of times these fish are schooling. Uh, I mean, you've gotta be able to get that bait in quick and fire back off to them. So having a cast, especially fishing from the bank, to get out there and reach as far as you can. Now, I prefer a Topwater Copolymer or Monofilament over braid. Uh, a line like this, like I said, 15 pound, is stiff. So when you're walking this back and forth, it doesn't tend to get caught under the bait. 
You can use straight braid, it floats. You can't use fluorocarbon because it doesn't float with these. So you want either like a monofilament or a copolymer that floats or braid. Now the reason I don't like braid is because it's limp and it will tend to get stuck under the bait and on that front hook as you're walking it. Some people do that, you could go braid to a leader, but I honestly prefer just to go with a regular old monofilament uh, or a copolymer like this to keep it out of the hooks. Now I wanna point out here that I've got a split ring on the front of this bait. If the bait doesn't have a ring on it, I don't tie directly to it, I add a split ring. Now you could also use a clip or a loop knot if you're comfortable with those. Uh, I don't prefer to go that way. I like to have a split ring on there, usually size three, um, so I add it if it doesn't come with it. Now as for a reel, I want something that's comfortable in my hand that I can walk this with. You can see uh, this combo here fits absolutely awesome in hand. It's a 7.5 to 1 speed and it's got enough line capacity. I don't want a super small, tiny spool. Again, I'm going to be sending this out there. Big long cast has to be comfortable with a decent speed to it because, you know, if I'm working this bait and I see fish blowing up over here, I got to get this in as quick as I can and throw it over there. So that's why I like to go with a combo like this. All right, I'm getting tired of sitting here yapping. Let's get out there and I'm going to show you how and where I use these. Okay, so the first question that everybody has is how do you walk a topwater walking bait? Well, the best way I can explain it is it's like you're pounding on a drum, you know, just light to dun 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 people try to like pull it and you're not really pulling it you're just popping the rod tip so i'm popping it away and then bringing it right back to where i was so if you look at my rod tip and it's coming right back to middle right where i started now you can work it with your wrist to the side oftentimes i have to do that out here when i'm bank fishing you know we don't have the luxury of like working on a boat where you can work it straight down either way works either way we'll walk it the biggest key to getting this to walk is slack line so you'll notice when i'm walking this out here and this isn't ideal conditions uh, when the water's a little bit calmer it's easier to walk but i have to have slack line you see how my lines kind of just laying there in the water i've got to have that slack to be able to work this bait back and forth that's what they call walking the dog is when the head of that bait goes right, left, right, left, right, left. That's walking the dog right there. Slack line, popping my rod tip and bringing it right back to where I started. Little short pops. Now the other important thing is to vary your cadence. So when I start out, you know, most fishing spots, I'm, I'm under 10 foot. I'm just going to use kind of a regular pop, 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 pop motion. The deeper it is, if you're trying to call fish from farther away or farther down, you're going to want to walk it slower. Pop, 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 making sure you keep slack line that whole time. And if fish are really feeding, going fast, going nuts, you can walk this thing super quick like this so they don't get a good look at it and really get those fish fired up. So don't be afraid to vary your retrieve speed. Now, where do I throw it? Well, if you've got fish blowing up and chasing bait, like in the back of cuts or in little creeks and stuff pinned up against rocks, I'm just gonna target those fish. I'm gonna target the fish that I actively see blowing up, throw it over there. Usually those fish are all fired up and that's what I wanna be targeting when I'm looking for fish that are schooling or actively chasing bait. Now we're near like a small lake like this. Don't be afraid to target isolated pieces of wood like this. You can walk it by it, just be careful not to get it stuck. You know, oftentimes a, a popper is a little bit easier on stuff like this because you can kind of cast by the target and pop it and keep it right by it. But if you notice fish kind of moving in and amongst wood and you know, along grass lines uh, and little lakes and stuff like this, I will absolutely walk it by that, no issue. Now I usually like the water to be a little bit calmer than this. Uh, you know, this isn't a big, huge, loud, crazy, insane bait, you know, like a buzz bait or or, or something that's got a bunch of clacking and stuff on it. Really, the only sound is that right there, a few BBs in there. This is actually a dual one that I painted up. Walks extremely easy, awesome little blank. I'm gonna get some of these up on my site soon, but. So the final tip for you is be patient. This clip is a perfect representation of that. I was walking the bait, the hooks got stuck a little bit. I started walking it faster. I didn't reel it in. I started walking it faster and that fish smacked it. Fish will oftentimes miss your walking bait. As you're going, just keep walking it. Don't set the hook hard so it pulls the bait away. That's why I'm just reeling down and pulling into it. That way if they miss it, I can go right back to walking it and more times than not, they'll come back to hit it. Now, that's a perfect time to change up your speed. You might wanna go a little bit faster like it's running away or slow down and even pause it. Recently I was out and the pause was key in a lot of those bites. So don't be afraid to change the speed. Don't be afraid to pause and finally make sure you have your drag set. So don't keep that drag cranked all the way down, back that drag off and if you need to, if that fish gets close to the boat and really starts pulling under, hit your thumb bar, let it get a little bit of line out, just keep tension with that rod. That's where a parabolic rod that's been over the whole time really helps. Keep tension on that fish, don't give it any slack line and play it. Uh, don't horse them with these trebles, you'd be surprised. Sometimes they only have you know one little treble in them and if you try horse them and throwing them around, good chance you're gonna lose that fish.
All right, Fusion friends, I hope this video helped you out with Waka Baits, everything from type, colors, combos. Comment below and let me know if you wanna see more videos like this, more kind of how-to tutorials if there's a specific bait, you know, with jerk baits, Ned Rigs coming up, a specific technique, or just some combo stuff, some more casting test stuff, any of that type of stuff, comment below and let me know. I definitely wanna do more of these. Winter's gonna be here sooner than I'd like, so I gotta get some more stuff out. So comment below and let, you know, let me know what you think. Now today's subscribe fishing friend is, Mr. Ryan Day, this comment made me chuckle because, listen, we've all been guilty of this, Ryan, uh, finding a lure, thinking it will be absolutely awesome, and it ends up just catching us and maybe not so many fish. But hey, that's the fun part of fishing. You never know until you try. So that is why I try to do these tips and tricks videos to help cut the learning curve for a lot of you who you know maybe didn't have somebody to teach you or you're just getting to try new baits and stuff. I will give you my recommendation again. I am no pro, uh, I'm just a guy who loves to fish, so take that with a grain of salt. And watch other channels, support the other fishing channels out there, there's a ton of people that do the how-to tips and tricks stuff. Watch them, support them, support the community. But listen, that's enough for me tonight. I gotta edit, so thank you all so much for watching, and until next time. Mm -hmm.